good to hear that in Korea people are talking about looking for ways to live safely, ways that we can open up and continue our activities. And it would be great if Korea provides a model that we can all learn from. Very early on in the outbreak, it certainly was possible. If we could have really brought down transmission and essentially given the virus nowhere to go, yes, we could have done that. But now with this huge amount of transmission, the virus is circulating everywhere in the world, it is more likely that we will see it in the human population. What we need to do is sort of decrease the harm it can do us. So one of the main ways we're doing that already is through vaccination because the vaccines protect against the severe illness and protect people from dying um, and, and reduce the pressure on our hospitals. So we're already bringing the virus, uh, reducing the harm of the virus, but yes, we do expect that it will be with us so we will have to be aware of how to prevent big outbreaks from this in the future so if you look at the history of humankind we have always adapted when we've had a big threat when we had plague which nearly wiped out the population the human population of europe there were changes and we have learned from those and we have adapted so many of us so we have to look at what how we can live well without giving it an opportunity. So things like, let's look at the ventilation in our buildings. Let's look at how we work. We've found that we actually work very well from distance. We don't always have to be sent like crowded into transport and go into little tiny offices and sit there in tiny little office spaces. Well, a lot of us are much more productive if we can work from distance. And that's actually how humans have worked for most of the time the species has existed. What we've been doing pre-pandemic was quite unusual in human mm -hmm. history. Mm -hmm. Mask wearing again in Asia, this has become very much a matter of politeness. If you have a respiratory illness, most many people in Asian societies wear a mask to others. So perhaps this custom needs to be adopted worldwide because this is protective. And it's also, I think, a very nice cultural thing to show respect to others. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's good to hear that in Korea, people are talking about looking for ways to live safely, ways that we can open up and continue our activities without letting this virus cause wreak havoc in our societies. Now, one of the problems is people have gone into these very strict lockdowns. And so they think, okay, lockdown, lockdown, and then back to normal, like your previous question. That's not how it works. And it will only work if we're all in it together and we think about what changes can I make? What can I do to ensure that my, me, my family, my relatives, my friends are safe and I can live my life and do my normal activities without increasing the transmission? Sadly, we're seeing uh, very much in, I uh, say, the Americas and Europe, once vaccination came in, people thought, ha-ha, okay, it's all fine. I can go back to doing all these things, crowding, carrying on. And we have indeed seen the infection soar. So we need to understand that we have to do things differently, but we all need to take that into our own hands and work out together. And it would be great if Korea provides a model that we can all learn from. But the critical thing is that you don't think, okay, vaccinated, everything goes back to this old pre-normal. So it, it, the, the, the things we've been talking about, again, need to be emphasised that you don't necessarily have to go be in a lockdown situation, but you do need to look at how can you reduce crowding? How can you avoid having people jammed into small spaces with poor ventilation? How can you make sure that people can do their normal activities in a way that will reduce transmission? So yes, when you're crowded, wear the mask. When you're, If you're working in an office and you're crowded, wear the mask. I mean, my mask is my best friend whenever I go to the <laughs> office. And we are certainly all wearing masks at WHO. Now, that doesn't mean we'll have to do it forever, but while there is still transmission, and especially while you're transitioning down from, you know, having the lockdowns and the very strict um, uh, regulations, the things that work best, and we found this over and over again, whether it's no matter what the infectious disease is, if the people um, really want to take protective measures and really understand what they need to do and do it, mm -hmm. then 
everything works. So it, it doesn't work if you just have rules from above. It's really got to come from below as well. So worldwide, many countries have looked to Korea and other and nations in Asia, particularly nations that have had experience with other serious coronaviruses, such as in Korea, it was MERS. In Hong Kong and Taiwan, it was uh, the first SARS, SARS-1. Uh, and where, again, the population has understood that this is a dangerous thing and we need to do it seriously, they do seem that those societies do seem to have worked a little better. Now, having said that, we're all struggling. This really is a virus that doesn't want to stop giving us trouble. And we all have to keep the pressure on. But indeed, the world can learn a lot from Korea and other nations like, like you. So because the vaccines are completely new and they've been developed more rapidly than any vaccine in the history of humankind. So a lot of people have been anxious, like, oh, but it's so new. I want to see what happens to other people. And that's a very normal human reaction. Unfortunately, we really don't have time to watch other people for 10, 20 years. And the reason we want everybody to get vaccinated is because they are working. <laughs> they are working to save lives. And we did a calculation recently, and I would say, Millions of lives have been saved in the countries that have had access to the vaccines. Well, certainly we itself internally continue to look at this as well. And we know that we need to get ever stronger and ever better and having better surveillance systems where or better um, reporting by countries. Now, what this has always been one of the struggles. We've got something called international health regulations, which obliges countries to provide data on any kind of um, potential threat, health threat, be it an infectious disease or be it radiation or a chemical spill, anything. Now, I would say honestly, worldwide, there's no country that comes out with gold stars on this. That uh, So our, our surveillance, our information reporting, our provision of information our needs to be a lot stronger. And then that's got to be something that's done together with the member states and and well, the world to, to agree on what they can do, how we can all do improve the reporting. And of course, we would like to be uh, have a much stronger ability to prepare well. We do work on preparedness, but again, that's got to be very much in partnership with countries that when there's an agreement that something needs to be done to improve our preparedness, it really has to happen. Uh, what parting message do you have for Korean Nets readers around the world who are all dealing with the pandemic at the moment? Well, be proud of yourselves and your country. You have come through a very, very difficult time and don't be frightened and depressed by the knowledge that it is going to continue. Uh, but remember, every time you take precautions, every time you avoid being in a crowd, every time you physically distance, every time you wear that mask, you're doing something not just for yourself, but for the world. And we thank you. And thank you for protecting your health. Get vaccinated. Take all the measures. Stay healthy. And I look forward to being with you again. <laughs>